Good evening, councillors, staff and visitors and those watching online and welcome to our first council meeting of 2021. The City of Swan disclaims any liability for any loss arising from any person or body relying on any statement, discussion, recommendation or decision made during this meeting, where an application for an approval, a licence or the like is considered or determined during this meeting. The City warns that neither the applicant nor any other person or body should rely upon that discussion or determination until written notice of either an approval and the conditions which relate to it, or the refusal of the application have been issued by the City. Please note that this meeting is being live streamed. The recording will also be archived and made available on the Council's uh, website after the meeting. If you choose to participate in a meeting during public question time and public statement time, it is assumed that your consent is given for the audio to be recorded. Please keep your comments respectful to the Council and under the members of the community. Conditions of entry, no electronic, visual or audio recording or transmitting device or instrument is permitted to be used. A person who breaches this provision of the City of Swan Meeting Procedures, Lo Meeting Procedures Local Law 2019 will be required to immediately leave the premises. Attendances and apologies. Mr. C, at this point I don't have any other than Councillor Predovnik who's running a few minutes late. Are there any others? None. Financial, uh, declarations for financial and proximity interest and interest affecting impartiality. Mr CEO. We have no additional declarations of interest apart from the ones that are within front of us. Okay. Uh, any others? Councillor McNamara, you have one. Okay, so you're not sure which petition it is yet. Okay. Any others, councillors or staff? Thank you. It takes us now to public question time. Question and, and answers recorded in the minutes of the meeting may be summarised in accordance with the Local Government Act Administration Regulations 1996. Questions and answers marked with an asterisk have been amended either for the purpose of summarising, for example, removing preamble or statements or editing. 5.1. Answers to questions were taken on notice. Answers to questions from Mr. Philip Riley, Bob Baku, and Viola Maripodi, taken on notice at the ordinary council meeting held on the 16th of December, are published in the agenda. Questions relating to uh, reports contained in the agenda, 5.2.1 questions to which due notice has been given, I have nil. 5.2.2 questions for which due notice has not been received. And I understand there are some questions from Ms. Barbara Dundas. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my question is broken into several parts. Councillors, do you know the real value of one Hill Street that you are to be considering today? You may not be aware that the Guildford Association has objected because the building at risk is an an intact and authentic 1912 building that has not been... Ms Dundas, I'll remind you this is question time, so not preamble or sta statement. It, it is the are you aware? Okay, so you've asked that question. You've got another question? Um, it's are you aware of the researched history that has taken place on this? And I can give you, it's not appeared in the council minutes or in any document. Are you aware the proponent has not done historical research or assessed the heritage value of the place? Are you aware that Heritage Council and State Heritage Office, when they do their research, look at the proponent's report and what is on the municipal inventory, which is very inadequate for this significant building? The question, last question I put to you is, should one Hill Street be assessed before a decision or um, another DA. So I'm putting those questions to you because it's about protecting a, a building of high integrity and authenticity. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dundas. You got those in writing if you'd hand them to the staff. I and have, we'll take them I on have done so. Thank you. Um, other questions for which uh, notice has not been given, I believe, have uh, Ms. Alana McSteg, is it? Thank you. Uh, I just have a question in relation to the development age application aged care facility use not listed lodged on the 19th of January 2021 to the City of Swan with reference to DA 414 to 2019C and how does this 
application differ from the previous development applications and what's the purpose of it? Mr Russell, can you adequately answer that? Certainly, Mr Mayor, I can adequately answer it. Uh, this application is solely and totally for the replacement pier, brick pier and retaining wall fencing to the western side boundary of the site adjoining the railway reserve, Mr Mayor, and that's only for that. Thank you, Mr Russell. Thanks Any further much. questions? Thank uh, you. That's the lot. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? None. Okay, councillors, in the agenda I have questions from Mr Bob Ellsby with the exception of question five who have been answered. I had further questions from Ms Karen Mowat, Mr Bob Baku, Jeff Blinko, Philip Riley, Michelle Lewis, Jackie Beros, Naomi Jenkin, Dave Wooler, Chris Caruza and Deanna Rokick. Are any of those people in the gallery? Ms Beros, you are, uh, and I believe you have a couple of questions following on to the answers you supplied. You happy with that? Okay, thank you. Um, we now move to uh, public statement time, and there are a number of public statements. Firstly, on item 6.1, Mr Christopher Mark, in regards to the fencing at lot 145-102 Lakeview Drive, Gidjigenup. Is Mr Mark with us? He is, he's coming. Thank you, Mr. Mark. If you'd just like to come to the microphone, and uh, you have two minutes to make your public statement. <clears throat> uh, dear councillors, my name is Christoph Mark. My wife and I have been living in Gijiganap for 12 years. We decided to have this 1.50 colobon fence installed for four main purposes a wire fence could not achieve deter intruders from breaking in, which happened several times, make a screen to prevent our dogs from barking at people walking along the street, act as an efficient fire break, as confirmed by Captain Bo Algeri, give us more privacy as our property is on the corner of two streets. I wish to answer quickly Councillor Kiley's question about the height of the fence. The standard 1.80 is too high as we prefer people passing by to see our beautiful brothel brushes and banksias. 120 is too low as our dogs manage to jump our wire fence to follow other dogs or horses, which is dangerous. So we thought 150 was just the right uh, height. Eight traders came on site for quotation and we were never warned that we should need shy approval to replace an existing fence. We notified our three direct neighbours before starting the project. They did not object and were satisfied with the final result. Collarbone fences are common and popular all over Australia, and there are several of them installed nearby in Gijiganup, which are, which are higher and of a colour that makes them stand out, unlike ours, which is bushland and blending well with the local environment. We cannot understand why the officer in charge recommended refusal, regardless of the full support of our entire community. This is why each resident signed the petition you were given. I have been working very hard for 12 years to make this property clean and safe. I spray each month to keep fire break all year round, three meters outside on the verges and five meters all around inside the property. I think we should be shown a good, good example rather than be considered like bad people. We spend $18,000 for this fence as a long-term investment. This had been a nightmare for five months and it's bringing my wife a lot of stress and anxiety. This is why we implore the councillors for giving us approval. Thank you for your thank, consideration. Thank you, Mr. Mark. And you are, if you aren't aware, there is a motion for, from Councillor 
um, Henderson on your fence this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillors, that now moves us to 6.2. Uh, and Mr Travis O'Reilly, in regard to item 5.3, the proposed removal of basketball hoop Newnham Park, Cavisham. Mr O'Reilly speaking support of the removal. Mr O'Reilly, you too have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say I support the recommendation <clears throat> to remove the court. And while there are many problems related to the court, I wish to focus on the largest problem and the primary reason for the complaints, which is the noise. When the court is used, there are usually multiple basketballs bouncing continuously. And then there is the banging of the backboard as someone shoots to score. There is shouting and yelling from youth playing and socialising. All this noise is natural for a public basketball court. However, the court is 20 metres from homes. And this noise <clears throat> reverberates considerably through the front rooms of the homes. This basketball ring was not on the development plans when we built there. Directly behind the ring are family homes and all those homes' designs have bedrooms at the very front of the house, directly facing the court. The court is public space and this allows anyone to start using it at any time. This means bouncing balls can start at any hour and it's completely out of the resident's control. Asking people respectfully to stop using a court or reduce the noise often falls on deaf ears and has recently resulted in making some neighbours the target of abuse. <clears throat> the stress and noise causes health issues for some homeowners and the contentious subject is causing community divide the longer we wait for resolution. Please resolve this soon. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr O'Rolling. Okay, now, um, 6.3 is Miss Mandy Bruford speaking on the same item, speaking in support of the retention of the basketball hoop. Thank you, Miss Bruford. Hi, my name's Mandy and my husband Martin is with us as well. And we felt that it was important to come and speak with you to show our support for the retention of the basketball hoop. When we built in Caversham, we picked the block that we chose directly opposite the park because we wanted to be near the park. We love it that it's used by community. We love seeing children and families all being there on the court and it would be very sad to see that moved. And I believe that when we built there, it was always on the plans. I think the basket hoop was already there when we started to build. So thank you for your time and thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. Bruford. We thank you for your time. Now move to uh, 4.9 and Ms. Barbara Dundas. Uh, Miss Dundas, you have uh, calling you up. Mayor and councillors, I ask you to reject the proposed development at One Hill Street. This is on behalf of the Guildford Association Executive. And the reasons given are not that we are saying the site cannot be developed, but do not damage the authentic. Um, roof structure of a 109 year old building. Within this building is also an 1850s building which has the altered roof. The particular building known as Edge Hill has particular integrity. It has been little altered. It's one of Guildford's very few buildings and when we talk about state listing we're talking about the integrity of the buildings within Guildford. We're talking about the streetscapes that have remained unaltered for over a century. This building has considerable streetscape value. It has gardens that need to be documented. It has social value and it contributes to the total town. The place has important associations and in particular we're looking at the man who actually 
redeveloped it in 1912. That is Lieutenant Colonel Manning, who represented Australia um, involved in uh, the First World War and also with the Department of Immigration. His uniform is held in the National Museum. This building is important. Alter it, and it's like um, ripping the bonnet off a, a prize vintage car. We're not saying don't develop. There are areas that can be developed, and the architect has to look elsewhere. He has to look around the back. Keep the original 1912 building. Build around the back. If it is not possible to get four bedrooms, four bathrooms, sauna, swimming pool, um, gymnasium, or whatever, on this small site, maybe it's an overdevelopment. But critically... Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Two minutes. Thank you. Councillor Zetnake takes us to 6.4. Is Mr. James Dean. And Mr. Dean, I apologise for skipping over you. Uh, in regards to item C3.1, the sale of land rates and charges outstanding more than three years. Um, has Mr. Dean been briefed on the confidentiality issue and that can't specifically refer to people or amounts? <coughs> Uh, good evening. No, I haven't been uh, advised of that. Okay, well, if you're going to speak about specific amounts of monies, then we have to uh, move to hear your um, statement behind closed doors. I'm sorry, I, I've been difficult to hear hearing you. Okay, if, you, if you're going to speak specifically about amounts and people's properties and places, then I would need to hear your statement behind closed doors because it's no, I'm, I'm not. Mine's uh, a series of questions to the council. Okay, well, I'll, I'll hear your questions, but we'll probably take them on notice. So oh, if they I are questions that. as opposed to a statement, um, I'll give you two minutes to post those questions. Um, you ready for the question? Yep. Hmm. Uh, is the council aware of um, Schedule 6.1 of the Local Government Act uh, in, in point one? where it specifies the gen general valu valuation of the valuation of land, and I have to emphasise land, it doesn't involve homes, and it relates to the valuation of Land Act 1978. Most of you will have received a, um, an email from me explaining about these, these particular um, sections of the Acts of Parliament. Now I refer to um, the uh, <coughs> Valuation of Land Act 1978, Section 4, and it emphasises and explains exactly what a gross rental value is, and we're re referring to a GRV, which is on the rates notice. And uh, this explains in some detail that uh, it's calculated that land that is rented to... Um, a third entity, which is the essence of the uh, section, um, these are subject to a gross rental value, uh, which is applied by the council. Um, is the council aware that this GRV is applied to every single property, regardless of whether it's leased to a third entity or not? And does the or is the council supplied by the staff of every um, individual land property or property um, which is um, re-leased to a third person so that you know exactly what you are passing instead of just a, a blanket GRV on everybody's homes? Thank We've you, got Mr. No Dean. objections. You, yeah, that's your two minutes. If you've got other questions, I'll, I'll ask you to give them to staff in writing and we'll take them on notice. Thank you. Yeah, I realise you, you're taking them on notice, but I haven't yep. finished. Okay. Thank you. That's your two minutes. Yeah. Thank you. I haven't had three minutes yet. That's two minutes, and you've actually had uh, two minutes and 20 seconds, so <laughs> your time is up. Thank you. Okay. Would it be advisable to write to you? You can certainly do that. Yeah. And I know you have my email address. Well, I prefer Thank to you. Stop. I prefer to sign my letters. Thank you, Mr Dean. I'll look forward to getting your letter. Yes, away. right. Thank you very much. OK, councillors, that note takes us petitions. There are a number of petitions. Firstly is uh, 7.1, 
a petition containing 33 signatures from owner and residents of Swan Valley Tourist Park against the proposed club room premises and workshop and driveway property located at uh, lot 802 West Swan Road. And there are officers' comments. Um, councillors, I need a motion that the above petition be referred to the CEO to be considered um, a submission of relevant development. Move to Councillor Henderson. Second, Councillor Barry. Join against. Look at that carried. 7.2 is a petition containing 15 signatures in support of the proposed fence at lot 145 102 Lakeview Drive, Gigi Gannup. And a motion that the petition be dealt with in conjunction with item 4.10 of that item. Move to Councillor Henderson. Second, Councillor Nino. Anyone against? Carried. Uh, I believe there's another petition from Mr. Keith De Costa um, in regards. Uh, we're not sure the number of signatures here in support of retaining the basketball hoop identified in item 5.3, proposed removal of the basketball. Um, Thank you, Mr. Costa. If you could just read the preamble to your petition and present it for us, please. Uh, yes, on the 14th and 15th of Jan, uh, myself and my beautiful wife, uh, we walked around the streets um, in our local area. We gathered seven. We spoke to 77 residents, uh, approached 67 houses. Uh, so 77 signatures uh, representing 67 houses. Uh, sorry, six, uh, six, yeah, we and we got 64 in support. The three that didn't support it, they just didn't want to get involved. What I do agree with Travis on, it, it, it is, has divided the community, and I think we need to, 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 to heal that and you know, make a decision, and then, you know, over time... Okay, and Mr Costa, you've got a statement there in regards to the petition... That's right, that's what I've just made. To, so, to 77, the 64, I'll like okay. submit it. OK, and there are 64... Six, so, 64 in support? Yep, that's all we want, 64. Ah, great. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Kat. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, councillors, I need a motion that... Uh, this petition be dealt with in item 5.3, the proposed removal of the basketball hoop. Moved Councillor Zanino, seconded Councillor Parry. No one against the kid that carried. Announcements by the presiding member, and I only have one. Councillors, I wish to provide some information in relation Excuse to... Excuse me, Mr Mayor. I've got a petition to present. Oh, my my apologies. Item. Councillor Lucas, if you could present that. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is a petition uh, from the customers, home group carers and delivery just drivers. Just one moment. I'll just... Councillor uh, McNamara has declared an interest this one, so I'll just yes, wait for the thank you. Thank you. Uh, the delivery drivers of the Kiara uh, Pharmacy petitioned the City of Swan to install a longer left-hand slip lane for vehicles turning left off Morley Drive East into the Kiara Pharmacy and Food Hall. Uh, there's some 439 petition uh, signatures along with accompanying maps and I hand that up to uh, have a report done uh, by staff. Thank you. Thank you. I just move that that petition be re uh, accepted. Move Councillor Parry, second to Councillor Kiley. No one neglects. Carried. No others? Okay. Councillors, uh, get back to uh, my announcement. Um, I can recall Councillor McNamara. Way there, Councillor Parry. Thank you, Councillor Kiley. Uh, councillors and ladies and gentlemen, I wish to provide some information in relation to a media release that was published prematurely on the City of Swans website this morning. This relates to item 3.1 on the agenda, the Strategic Community Plan 2021-2030. Late yesterday afternoon, a media release was prematurely published on the City's website in advance of the Council decision on this matter, which is to be made tonight. City officers prepare media releases ahead of time in anticipation of a decision, event or initiative. This is our usual practice and ensures that we're able to share news updates with media and community in a timely manner. A step in this process is uploading the release in a draft, unpublished format to the City website. City officers uploaded the media release to the website on Tuesday the 19th of January with a scheduled published date of Friday the 22nd of January which allowed enough time to review the Council's decision and make any necessary updates to the content following tonight's ordinary meeting of Council. A small edit was made to the draft page on Tuesday the 19th of January, which unfortunately cleared the scheduling settings, which in turn caused the news story to publish prematurely. City officers sincerely apologise for this error and have reviewed and adjust adjusted our website settings so this does not occur again. Uh, members' questions that were taken on notice, answers to questions from Councillor McNamara and Councillor Henderson 
taken a notice that Audrey Council meeting of the 16th of December were published in the agenda. Questions to which due notice has been given. I have eight questions from Councillor Johnson that have been answered on as 10.2, which were given notice. Uh, also questions which due notice has not been given. A number of questions from Councillor Johnson that also have been answered. Are there any further questions from councillors? Councillor Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just to follow up uh, about the um, CEO uh, dinner, of which many questions have been asked by a lot of people. Um, the question I've got is, um, how was that uh, $10,000 approved? Funds are allocated for the recognition of long-serving employees in our annual budget and the events uh, committee approves the event. Has the events committee got any delegated authority? Uh, they have a, uh, what do you call them? a description of their process. So, in effect, when council approved the budget and allocated money for those events, they approved the use of those funds. So I guess that's the question. Has it got delegated authority? It's a kind of yes or no question. Through you, Mr Mayor, can we ask um, the CEO or Ms Albright to answer that one? Uh, Ms Albright, do, do you wish to answer that one? It falls in your neck of the woods. Through you, Mr Mayor, the uh, Events and Relationships Committee does not have delegated authority but has an advisory role and uh, city officers often seek their um, uh, guidance and advice on uh, city events. That's the role that's set out for them in the terms of reference. So I guess then we can find somewhere in the budget CEO leaving dinner that was approved. We All right. Probably read the budget. Are there any further questions, councillors? Councillor Carley. Just further to Councillor Johnson's questions, if it was an advisory capacity that that committee approved the $10,000 expenditure, who do we advise for approval? Should, is it to go to another stage through you, Mayor? Not at this point in time. I don't think, Ms Albright. Through you, Mr Mayor. The, the budget wasn't being approved. It was the type of event that was being held that was a set that we sought feedback from the Events and Relationship Committee on. Further to that, Mayor, you mentioned that it was an advisory body. Who are we advising to expend that or go ahead with that? Uh, are we advising the whole council or another committee, subcommittee? I think Ms. Bright's already stated that the committee gives advice to city staff on the events. Any further questions? Yeah, just to follow up on that, Mr Mayor. So if the advisory committee is advising staff, in effect they're advising the CEO, who at the time was Mr Foley and it was his dinner. So in effect, was he approving his own dinner? He, Mr Foley didn't approve anything, Councillor. Councillors, any other questions before we move on? Councillor McCulloch. Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I do have just some questions for Councillor Johnson, if I may. Um, Councillor Johnson, is it your view that as a councillor of the City of Swan that a councillor owes it to each and every resident and ratepayer of the City of Swan to treat them fairly and to be polite to them? I'll take all these on notice if that's right, Mr Mayor. Certainly, I'll move on. I am polite to everybody. Is it your view that each and every resident and ratepayer of the City of Swan has a right to be treated respectfully, fairly and in a professional manner when dealing with councillors or city staff, regardless of skin colour, ethnicity or background? Point of order, Mayor, where is this going? Uh, I mean, there's very entitled, lengthy questions. Well, councillors are tired to ask questions, councillors, and, and Councillor Johnson can, um, can answer them if he wishes, or he can take them. I notes. certainly can. Um, look, uh, Mr Mayor, I think... Uh, What's going on here is uh, you're making some kind of uh, defamatory slur against me, so would you please no, retract that? Not in the least, Councillor Johnson. You, just, you can just answer the question just, or take a notice. Further question, Councillor I'll continue if you'd, if you'd prefer to take them on notice. Councillor Johnson, have you seen the email that a ratepayer emailed to all councillors on Sunday the 17th of January in regards to his dismay at how he was treated by you during a short conversation near Noonan Park on that same day? And in the email, the ratepayer states that you told him that you had attended on a woman who had not attended last week's agenda forum to make a deputation. When the ratepayer asked you as to why she had not attended the agenda forum, you responded to him, because of people like you. 
Would you care to explain why you would say something like that to a resident of our city? And upon what proof was your comment based? Last couple of questions. Were you implying that this resident had been threatening other residents? Were you implying that this Mr. Mr. Mayor, I think you need to intervene here. Ethnicity had think something to do point with of order. the issue. Well, wait, one moment. You, you're being asked some fair questions. Yeah, it, so yeah but there, already... it's a point of order. These are defamatory and inappropriate questions. Mm. And I think, um, Mr. Mayor, we should point out that Councillor McCullough is your wife. And maybe at this point, you should cease the chair and hand it over to Councillor Lucas. Excuse me, Councillor Johnson. I'm an elected member in my own right... Okay. Well, I won't take a debate. I think the world. Thank you. I'm pointing out that Mr. The, Mayor, the Mayor that has was... a, a conflict of interest. There is no conflict. Oh, Council, I think we've had some pretty fair questions from Councillor Johnson. You, so I'm going to go. That was my last question. Thank you, thank you Mr. Mayor. Provide those questions. So, Mr. Mayor, I'll answer those questions. Do you want to copy them? No, I don't. I'm going to answer them. So, Mr. Mayor, it's I've true accepted that, um, that I'm happy to take them on notice, Mr. Well, Mayor. I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm answering them now. No, because I'm, I'm not. Mayor, I'm, wait, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Hang on, wait, wait. To order, I'm answering the questions now. So, wait, please wait. let me speak. Councillor Johnson has indicated he wishes to answer the questions, so we will give him that opportunity. So, Mr. Mayor, councillors, and members of the public, on Sunday, after reading a letter from one person who is uh, an affected resident of this problem, I went to the area to door knock the community to find out what people thought. So I spent some time sitting in the park and observing and nobody was playing basketball. I looked around the park, I walked around it, and then I decided to door knock. So I started with the houses nearby. I knocked on four doors and the fourth one opened. And I, went inside, I was invited inside and I spoke to the person concerned. And they conveyed to me an apprehension of significant concern, which I don't wish to go into because I don't wish to divulge their, their private concerns, um, such that they had a significant apprehension uh, of, uh, what's the word, adverse consequences of participating in any public um, forum, uh, requesting the removal of the basketball court. They were severely impacted by the noise that is being presented, and uh, we're in some considerable fear. Now, I, it, it's, the apprehension was that it was somebody we know. Now, I then left. I thought I'd got enough information, and I thought, well, I'll walk back to my car, get in and drive off and look at the school basketball court, which I've been told was about five minutes away. At that point, um, I believe it was Mr De Costa wearing a baseball bat, came baseball uh, cap, not bat, came up, to me, and uh, wanted to know if I'd speak with him. I said, well, actually, I'm on my way now to see the basketball court, and I've already heard from you. And uh, I said to him, look, I've already heard from you, and uh, he was extremely insistent. He demanded that I talk to him. I was sat in my car with the window partially open, and I have to say that I apprehended a significant fear of what was going to happen next. I was wondering, what happens? Do I undo my seatbelt? Will that trigger something? Do I start the car? What do I do? So when I said to him, yes, people are afraid, and I don't recall the exact words I used, people were very, people in the area are afraid. And, uh, and I apprehended significant fear too on that occasion. So no, Councillor McCulloch, I was, not aware, I was not making any racial slur to anybody, and you will need to take that back, because that was defamatory. In fact, I think you'll find that my skin's probably darker than Mr. De Costa's. So... Um, I think an apology is owed. I was doing my job as a councillor. Thank you. Questions are fair. Thank you, councillors. Any other questions? None. We'll move on. Leave of absence. Uh, any leaves of absence, Mr CEO? Yeah, we have one leave of absence from Councillor Parry, and it's from the 22nd of March to the 26th of March inclusive. Thank you. Any further applications for leave? Councillor Lucas. Uh, I'll hand the form in shortly uh, from the 1st of February to the 5th of February. Okay. Any others? Thank you. I move that, um, uh, move that those minutes, uh, the leave of absence, be approved. Moved to Councillor Congerton, second Councillor McNamara. Anyone against? Carried. Confirmations of minutes. The resolution required to confirm the minutes of the 16th of December 2020 Council meeting. Move that. Councillor Congerton, second Councillor Parry. Anyone against? 
It takes us now, councillors, to business left over from the previous meeting. meeting and item 13.4 is the state of question future management options and a proposed motion from Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Councillors. Uh, I move that Council resolves to one. Recognise that the equestrian facility in Brigadoon is an integral part of the equestrian activity in Brigadoon, the Swan Valley, Upper Swan, Bullsbrook and Gidjiganap and provides a support base more widely. Two, accept that the cost of maintaining the facility cannot be sustained by the sport and the city's budget. Three, include $180,000 on the 2021 budget to assist in general operations at the State Equestrian Centre with funds to be acquitted. Four, add refurbishment costs of the building and facilities to the advocacy list seeking financial support from state and federal government. Five, if state and or federal funding is not received, write to the Minister of Sport and Recreation, propose lot 30, uh, 43 and lot 31 Cathedral Avenue, Brigadoon, be ceded to the Crown and vested in the State Government for ongoing management. 6. Advise Equestrian WA and the Department of Local Government, Sport and Cultural Industries accordingly. 7. Record the reason for the changing the staff recommendation is as follows. A. To allow time for state and federal governments to provide funding for the urgent works needed to sustain the facility in the long term. B, to note that the City of Swan does not have the resources to maintain the facility. Depreciation and operating costs for a facility utilised more widely than the residents within the City ratepayer capture area. Thank you. I have a seconder. Councillor Zanino. Is anyone against? No one against. Declare that carried. Um, adoption of those items contained in the agenda not withdrawn. Councillor, they are listed on page 26 and 27. Can I move that those be adopted? Moved Councillor Congerted, seconded Councillor Lucas. Is there anyone against? We declare those carried. We now move to those items with alternate motions. Item 2.1, the Sustainable Environmental Strategy and an alternate from Councillor Johnson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, my motion is that Council resolve to defer advising, advertising the draft sustainable environment strategy for a period of three months, for the CEO to revise section 5.3, focus area carbon reduction by including within it a, a target of net zero CO2 emissions from the City of Swan operations commencing in the financial year 2022-2023, b, an outline plan and schedule to achieve this target, Three, for the CEO to include in the 2021-2022 budget funding for consulting services to create the plan, schedule and budget to achieve the target. Four, record the reasons for changing the officer's recommendation is that section 5.3 is not likely to meet community expectations as it does not include mention of the city's recognition of a climate change emergency and does not include any CO2 emission reductions targets. Thank you. Seconder. Seconded, Councillor Scanlon. Is there anyone against? Just a question, Mayor, if I could. A question, Councillor Colley. Um, I'm just uh, point two A. I'm just think that's a little bit um, ambiguous in respect of are we trying to achieve CO2 emissions of zero by the year 2022-23, or are we looking to uh, set as a target from then on? Um, I'm wondering if Councillor John, if we Councillor Johnson, if you yeah. clarify that point. Yeah. The, the the idea is to achieve net zero CO2 emissions commencing in the financial year 2022-2023. That doesn't clarify it, Mayor. It's the same uh, amb ambiguity. Um, no, I'm of the same view, Councillor Colley. You remember that state policy is zero carbon emissions by, 20, by, by 2050. This one, you need to clarify whether we're commencing to be zero CO2 emissions at that time or we start a program towards zero CO2 emissions. Yeah, it says commencing in the financial year 2022 slash 2023. So the idea is that net zero CO2 emissions would be, would commence in 2022, 2023. So that's the target. It's pretty clear to me. Unless anyone's got a better way of writing it. It means during that financial year, we will achieve 
net zero CO2 emissions. So I think it's clear as a bell. Can I amend it there for Mayor? Can I change point 2A to read um, uh, to achieve to achieve a target of net zero CO2 emissions from the City of Swan operations by the financial year 22-23? Commencing in the financial year 2022-23. So to achieve a target of. So I'd be okay with that, that would work. So in effect you're saying that in the financial year 2022-23, the city will achieve zero carbon emissions. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. So I'll go back to my amendment, Mayor. To achieve a net, include achieve and take out the word commencing practically, and instead of a uh, achieve to achieve target a target of net zero. Sorry, to achieve a target of net zero CO2 emissions from the city of Swan operations. Uh, I, think, I think by the financial. By the end of financial year 22-23. I think your, yeah, your wording clarifies what you answered me, Councillor Johnson. Yes, the question is what happens in the financial year 23-24? Does it go back to being different? That's why I put the word commencing. So the idea is that it commences and it continues. Councillor, um, well, first of all, are you going to accept that amendment? If it's clear to everybody. Are you clear with it? What, what Councillor Collins proposes is that in 2023, the 22 23, we will be at a level of zero carbon emissions. And put and to, on the end of it, put and in future financial years. I'll add that in uh, and in future financial years, Mayor, at the end. Okay. Seconder? Am I allowed? to amend that, <laughs> ask Councillor Kyle if he'll consider amending that for clarity purposes, because it could read that we're asking for a, a net zero emissions by the end of 22-23. I think that's what Councillor Johnson is asking for. That is... He clarified no, that. No. Well, no. the move and the second need to get their act together, because Councillor Johnson's saying that's what he wants, and you're the second to say, no, that's not what he wants. So okay. May Councillor I? Johnson, would you like to clarify it for your seconder so she understands? Thank you. Yeah, look, um, maybe this is debate, but many other um, local government areas have already achieved net zero CO2 emissions, so doing it by 22-23 is actually quite late. So it's, it's quite achievable. So the, um, the, the entire structure of this puts in place the plan together. Yes, I'm in agreement. OK, you're right now. So that's yeah. now you agree to that motion. Right, OK. Councillor Caroline, you've got a question. I have got a question because um, I don't know how I, any, we can... We haven't had a seconder for the amendment yet, have we? No, but they're moving the seconder. Happy for the, the amendment oh, to go okay. ahead. All so right, then. Fine. So then I've got a question for staff, and that is how well, achieve... No, no, no. You've got no, a question to me, Councillor Catalano, and I'll direct it to a staff member OK, to then. Thank I've you. got a question, and that is... And that is of staff, because they're going to answer well, it. Well, yeah, will you ask me the question? That's the protocol. That how achievable is it um, to have reached that target of zero CO2 emissions? That is a good question. Mr Coton. Achieved by, effectively... Oh, Leon, the year Mr Vanderlyn. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> you, I would like to refer councillors to a, a memorandum that was sent out to them earlier this afternoon. <clears throat> They've each received a copy... Um, in the documentation in front of them as well. The, city's, the office, city officer's position in this regard is that although it is consistent with the approach in the, and taken in the strategy to include a, a target in the longer term, the city or the council needs to resolve to adopt this target and it's not advisable to adopt such a target until Council is fully apprised of the City's current emission tra trajectory, the City's emission profile and the business activities that relate to, to each emission source, the emission tra trajectory required to meet a net zero by whatever date target in the City of Swan, the political, technolo technological and economic conditions required to support the City to meet an, a net zero target by a certain date, particularly in relation to a transition from fossil fuel-based um, transport. 
We propose that a presentation regarding this information be made available as a briefing to councillors prior to the draft strategy being submitted for endorsement. This will allow for council to be thoroughly informed of the above and to also have an understanding of the public's view at the time on the subject before making a final decision on how to address the issue. Um, it will be very difficult to reach a zero target, a, a target of zero emissions by 2050. So in my view, it will be impossible to reach such a target by 2022-23. Thank you. Ms. Keller? Uh, that was um, by 2050, did you say it was impossible to reach? Is that, did you say what you I just said, said it then? It will be difficult to reach the, that target by 2050 because it, um, in that instance, it's, it's reliant on policy, the policy and technological development environment. Um, so therefore, by 22, 23, in my view, it will not be possible. You got a question? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Through you, I do have a, another question. Yes, and it's to follow on from that. Um, and that I'd just like to clarify with Mr. Vanderlind that it is not possible for the city's operations to become um, to have zero emissions by 2050. We're just talking about the city's operations, not the city of Swan in its entirety. I'd just like so to clarify question. that, please. Just clarify that, please, Mr. Vanderlee. That is correct, Mr. Mayor. For, for an example, I don't think it's realistic to think that by 2022, 20, 2023, the West, Western powers, um, uh, uh, power grid will, 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 be, um, uh, will be at a zero emissions um, level and we will be reliant on buying power from them. So from, from that perspective in, its, in itself, it's not possible. Okay. Thank you, councillors. Bear in mind, councillors, this is only uh, a strategy to go out for public comment. So we have a, an alternate motion from Councillor Johnson. It's been amended. Is out of a move and a second. Is anyone against? There is. I'll ask the obvious question. Do you wish to debate it? Thank no, Mr. Mayor. No? Councillor Congerton? Councillor Richards, wish to debate it. Councillor Kiley? Uh, yes, Mayor, I do. Thank okay. you. Councillor Johnson, open the debate. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I can see there's some surprise from councils. They think we couldn't possibly achieve this target by, uh, uh, 20, by the financial year 22-23. Uh, but councils, if you think about it recently, uh, only about a year ago, people were saying it would 10 year, take 10 years to develop a, uh, a vaccine for the COVID virus, but now we've got a choice of three or four. It's not that hard when there's an emergency. On of order, Mr. Mayor. No. <laughs> the COVID wasn't around 10 years ago. Sorry, I meant last year. I, I think, Councillor, uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, very funny. Anyway, I meant last year. So, councillors, as said, the reason for the motion is that Section 5.3, Focus Area Carbon Reduction, is not likely to meet community expectations as the city has recognised a climate change emergency. I think back in July 2019. I think if we put this particular report out to public consultation in its current form, we may risk reputational damage as the report is not aligned to current thinking on action to respond in a timely way to the climate change emergency. Section 5.3 of the report does not mention that the city has recognised a climate change emergency. So quickly have a look now, councillors, see if I'm wrong. Back in February last year, a delegation of councillors, of which I was one, went to a climate change conference in Melbourne. Before the conference, I thought that the IPCC target of net zero em CO2 emissions by 2050 was a reasonable goal. I thought that was entirely reasonable and that's what we should be targeting. However, to my surprise, I heard at that conference directly from the Mayor of Melbourne addressing the conference, she told us that the City of Melbourne operations were already carbon neutral. That was back in 2020. It had already been done. I looked online and I found that the City of Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane were, are all already carbon neutral. So if they can do it, so can we. So councils, let's set ourselves a stretch goal that, one of, that, one, that the younger people of the city would be proud of, to, to set a target of net zero CO2 emissions commencing in the financial year 2022-23. That gives us a whole year to prepare for the change. So in this financial year, we've still got time to put money on the budget to do the planning and preparation during the 2021-2022 financial year in preparation for our target in the following financial year. So this, this motion provides that lead-in, 
the ability to put in place the budget, to get the consulting in place, to identify the CO2 emissions, to set the targets of reduction, to work out how to do it, and then to implement it in the following year. We're behind schedule, councillors. We need to get on with this. Now, some will say, oh, the city's contribution to CO2 emissions is so small it won't make any difference. But every organisation needs to do its bit. Remember, councillors, I'm only talking about the city's operations. I'm not talking about the businesses and residents in the city of Swan. Just what we are doing. We need to set an example. And I guess this brings me on to something that happened to me earlier this week um, at my current client site. I found myself unexpectedly... Um, <laughs> I found the owner of the business, who is very well known, um, suddenly in front of me, introducing himself and wanted to know, who was I? What did I do? So I answered the questions, I explained what I was doing for him. And then he said to me this. He said, to my astonishment, are you making a difference? And I said, yes, of course I am making a difference. Uh, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't making a difference, would I? Uh, Councillors, that was a challenge he put to me, and I understand he puts that challenge to everybody he meets. And the other thing he said was, sometimes you've got to step out into, into deep water. You've got to take risks. You've got to take some chances. So, councillors, I thought that was a very inspirational, short, probably two or three-minute meeting. And I urge you all to get on board with this, councillors. This is what we need. We've seen the community react well to one emergency. Now it's time to turn our sights back onto the emergency we had a year ago that we were very focused on then. So, councillors, if we put this draft sustainable environment strategy out into the community in its current form, people will say, what is the City of Swan doing? This is so far from the reality that we are facing, so far from what the community are expecting, that they will wonder what we're doing. So that's why I'm saying, councillors, defer it for three months, modify it to put these targets in place, and uh, let's get moving. So, councillors, I urge you, make a difference and step out into deep water, and um, let's, uh, let's succeed in solving this problem. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Scanlon is a seconder. Nothing further to add. Thank you. Okay. Speaker against the motion. Councillor Colley. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, councillors, I rise to um, encourage you to vote down this motion for the moment. Um, it's not that I disagree with the sentiment and the ideas and thoughts Councillor Johnson's put forward for his motion. However, I think it's a little bit premature uh, immediately after Christmas to, to just th throw up a single idea um, and move forward with that. You'll note that my alternative motion is to defer this item for one month, a month only, where we all get to have input into the uh, possible inclusions into this document or possible uh, uh, things we might want to take out of the document. Um, Councillor Johnson's does, motion does not include or provide for possible inclusions of other, of other councillors, uh, considerations of ideas, targets, goals or um, anything else. So there's a whole range of things that I'm sure with the input of all of the council and councillors, we, you might be able to come up with uh, better ideas than just potentially what Councillor Johnson's put forward here. It's not that he's putting up a bad idea, it's just that I think we need to get that briefing staff we're talking about. I think we need to look at what we want to put out a little bit more carefully. Um, I, know, I recall that Councillor Henderson would also, and Councillor Scanlon would like the opportunity to discuss this important strategic document with the new CEO. So I'm encouraging you to vote this motion down and look for the deferment um, and for the next month where we can come back and uh, consider maybe some more significant changes, uh, potentially including the same one that Councillor Johnson's put forward. Um, and he may want to put the same motion forward in February. But I think I would like the opportunity to sit with the CEO, the new CEO. This is an important strategic document going forward. The community expect of, it, of us to sit and look at this carefully. Um, I don't want to approve the document as it stands tonight. Um, so please uh, vote this down and support my deferment for the month. Thank you. Thank you. Question, Councillor Congerton. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, would it be possible to you to advise a possible date that we would be able to meet on, given our scheduling? Uh, Mr. CEO, two, two of the Wednesdays are taken out by agenda forum and agenda. Uh, I understand that next Wednesday's briefing is totally free. There is nothing on the agenda, so that would be the first opportunity for council to brief prior to this document going out if a deferment happens tonight. Uh, could it be prudent to see a show of hands who would attend such a briefing session? 
Well, we're, we're asking for a vote, but... Um, a show of hands, not votes. I'm not asking for a... a, a, a uh, Mr. S the CEO would like to make a comment. Just if I can, Mr Mayor, just the only challenge for the administration for next Wednesday is a key member of staff that um, would be able to come along and brief council is unfortunately on annual leave next week. So after that, Wednesday is particularly uh, booked out. So it would have to be, if anything, uh, a special time for a briefing. OK, further question then. Would it be possible for the following Wednesday to be forward to ne next Wednesday and make the following Wednesday free. Is that staff member back from leave? See you. Order, Mr. Mayor. We're now getting into questions and debate about Councillor Carley's motion. We need to so focus point on Point of order, one. Mr. No, no, Mayor. No, no, please no. be. I'm, I'm asking a question, uh, and yeah, I really would like order, to ask Councillor Johnson to refrain from interrupting. Thank you. Thank, yeah, yeah Councillor Congren, you, you don't have a point of order, Councillor Johnson. Mr. CEO. Mr. Mayor, I'd have to ask Mr. Vanderlyn um, in relation to that staff member's leave for the following week. Um, Mr. Mayor, my understanding is that Jeremy is on leave until next Friday, so he'll only be back on the Monday. So to make the briefing inform the briefing slides available to council by Friday next week, to make it available, f you know, to have it available for the Wednesday in terms of our normal arrangements will be difficult. Um, I don't know. Do I, I, does somebody have the, the briefing schedule in front of them, perhaps, for the next month or so, to see whether there's a, an, a, an opening? Megan, do you perhaps have that? So, Mr Van, it would be unlikely without setting a special date before the next council meeting? Th that is correct, yes. Is there any question? OK. OK, a s question, Councillor McNamara. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, with, with regard to the actual... Um, the actual uh, motion itself uh, and the, uh, I suppose, the policy of, of, of uh, climate change. I understand that the, um, the, the mover of the, of the, of the, the, and the seconder has said that it is the city's operations that they're talking about with regard to this and the city operations only. But it just can't stop there, Mr. Mayor. For instance, this time next year, when the people of Balladura re-elect me, I'll be driving my diesel car to a council meeting on council business. Mr. Mayor, well, can, this will wait, affect, get a question. Will this, Mr. Mayor, affect me as a councillor carrying out my duties? Will it also affect the councillors who live next door to people who have diesel vehicles? So this is just more than... A, a, a situation. Okay, councillors, remember, Councillor McNamara, this is questions, not debate. Thank you. Okay, do I have a speaker uh, for the motion? Further speaker against the motion, Councillor Perry. Just very quickly, I do believe that I don't disagree with anything that, or I don't disagree having a look at the carbon emissions from 22, 23. I don't dispute any of that. But it needs to go to the public first to get their consultation. And we can do that now. And if you want to talk to the CEO or whoever you want to talk to, you can do that in the meantime. That's the only thing. Bring it out to public consultation first, because you can't have community expectations until you get the community involved first. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you, Councillor Perry. A further speaker for the motion, for or against? No further speakers. Councillor Johnson. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Just to point out that my motion does actually defer advertising this. I know that's what Councillor uh, Carly mentioned, uh, that he's got a deferment motion. Mine does uh, defer this. Um, in terms of uh, community consultation, we are putting it out to community consultation. It basically defers advertising it for three months. It's changed and then it goes out to community consultation. The purpose of the motion is to ensure that it meets community expectations because I think when it goes out, we're going to have a lot of people saying it does not meet community expectations. Um, address um, Councillor uh, McNamara's um, point about, I guess he... Councillor McNamara may be concerned you might have to bicycle uh, to council meetings. Um, Councillor McNamara, as, as I'm sure you know, a councillor is not part of the city operations, so therefore I can assure you that the diesel you put in your car is not going to be affected by this. You're completely safe. There is no need to get a bicycle or an electric sort of um, bicycle or anything along those lines. Um, and yes, Councilor, it's, please. I'll, I'll, it's too late to change it, I'm afraid, councillors. And finally, a point of order is not an interruption, it's a point of order. Thank you. Thank you. Councillors, those in favour of the motion? 
Councillor Richardson, Councillor Catalano and Councillor Johnson. Motion fails. Everyone else is against. Takes us now to Councillor Kiley's motion. Uh, Councillor Kiley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councillors, my motion is to defer this item until the 17th of January 21, Ordinary Council meeting. Uh, the reason for the changing the officer recommendation is that it is a very important strategic document and following so soon after Christmas, more time is required to allow councillors suitable time to consider potential changes more thoroughly. Seconder. Councillor Zanino, you were first. Zanino, one against. Oh. This question, Councillor Jones. February's sorry, I spoke very quickly. 17th of January 2021. February, February sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, we've got a move and a second. Is there anyone against? There is. You, you've got a. Okay. Let's An amendment, an please. Okay, yeah, let's hear the amendment. Um, that um, it's amended from the February meeting to the March meeting so that we get the chance to do this briefing session that we were talking about earlier uh, to discuss um, the zero emissions and the possibility of it and all that kind of thing. Councillor Colley. Uh, question through you, Mayor. Is that uh, more of a suitable time for staff um, in terms of giving a briefing on, the doc on that document? Well, remember, Councillor, we'll be getting a briefing again when it comes back for comment, but Mr Vandalin. Yes, that gives us a month more time to okay. find a date for such a briefing. Seconder. Okay, so that means now to the March meeting. Okay, now go back. There is a speaker against, so Councillor Coley, you wish to open the debate? You don't wish to debate it? Okay. In that case, Councillor, if no one wishes to debate it, I'll... Councillor Richard, if you're not playing funny games with me, because I know where you'll vote, you would like to debate it, you said, and you're against the motion. Okay. Councillor Coley. Uh, Mayor, I just think this is a prudent way of... Uh considering the document as a whole and um, putting out something substantial for the community to consider and I'd like it put to the vote. Thank you. Is it second it? Sorry. Can I raise a point of order? Um, and that is that I think it's not um, a wise to call other councillors on this council silly buggers or that they're playing I silly buggers. I said they're buggers. playing silly games. Councillor Callan, yeah, you're, fully aware, you're fully aware that what, what the No, I just here, think so it's not the right language you're good, to okay. use. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Points of order, Mr. Mayor. Would you mind just apologising for that? No. Uh, you, Richard, you wish to speak against the motion? I would like to apologise. Okay. I'm sorry. I hurt your feelings, I'm Councillor sorry, Richardson. Yes. Would you like. Well, we know. We know. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Richardson, against the motion? I rest my case. Okay. No further speakers? Councillor. You're not the seconder. Councillor Zanino is the seconder. He doesn't wish to speak. Okay. Do I have any speakers for or against? Councillor. McCulloch. I'm um, sorry, Mayor. The seconder hasn't spoken. Yeah, he was chose not to speak. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillors, it's going out for comment. We can look at a briefing. We can discuss this. Um, look at valid and valuable changes. But this revised sustainable environment strategy is significantly shorter, and it sets the strategic directions in line with the strategic community plan. So it isn't actually expected to be contentious in its comment, but yes, there will be consultation. So the approval of council is now sought to undertake public advertisement of the draft sustainable environment strategy for that period of 28 days. It's a likely, we know that this advertising period will occur in February 21. And then councillors take note because we do seem to be deferring a lot of items which is requiring further work and we need to be um, on board to make sure that we are looking at and well prepared for these things coming to council. Following this advertising period and if required subsequent modifications, the draft sustainable environment strategy will be returned to council, returned to council for consideration of adoption. And that is then there, maybe after some briefings and some great rigorous discussions, we can refine it beautifully and have something that our community, after consultation, and our council, working with staff, are very proud of. 
Thank you. Any further speakers? Question. Councillor Congerton, question. Yes, and I'm sorry to labour this, Mr Mayor. Um, if this uh, goes out for public consultation, it then comes back to the city for amendments. Does it then go back again out to public consultation as a final document? Mr Vanderlyn. Mr Mayor, this strategy is not a, a, a requirement under any legislation. So the public consultation is as a result of the, the city's policy in, with regards to getting the input from, from residents. So if the modifications that are made is addressing the issues raised by the, by the community and those modifications does not have a major impact on any other part of, of the, the strategy. It's not necessarily that it will have to be re-advertised. So one will have to consider the, the submissions and the, and the um, impact of those modifications before such a decision is made. But I have to confirm with you that it's, there's no legislative requirement that, that determines whether it has to be advertised or not. Further question Further then, question, Mr. Mr. So then um, if modification is made to the plan after it comes back to council, can council then move a motion that it goes back out to public consultation? Mr. Vanley? Mr. May, yes, certainly they can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Scanlon, are you speaking in favour or against the motion? Okay, Councillor Scanlon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to raise a couple of points with this discussion, and one is that the community speak loud and clear about sustainability. It's one of the areas that the community tell us they want the city to focus on. And they would love to see something that's moving towards a goal such as a zero emissions target, something that is reachable. And we need to have this briefing by the staff before we can put that in. We need to defer this so that we can have the briefing, so that the strategy we send out to the community is the strategy that we are finalising. It would be quite silly to send this out for consultation, bring it back, make changes and then vote again to send it out for consultation because of the cost involved in community consultation, which I believe is quite significant. So I really believe the, um, the best way forward for us, for this council, for our sustainability um, environment strategy is to simply allow the staff to give us the briefing on how we can achieve zero admissions, what we can do. Um, the staff have been researching this and I'd just really like for us to see uh, do this properly. So please support the motion to defer this, to allow us to get it right before we go out to the community rather than having a whole pile of feedback from the community saying X, Y, Z, we haven't got any strategies in place, this isn't a real document, let's show them that we want this to be right, that it's important to us to get it right. Please support the deferral motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scanlon. Any further speakers? Councillor Catalano, are you speaking for or against the motion? I'm speaking for the motion. Okay, well, and I need I'm... a speaker against the motion. Councillor Lucas. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I don't support the motion because it's about giving councillors extra time to read and make potential changes. What I think is we need to hear from our community. So I'm foreshadowing the officer's recommendation, but extending the um, public advertising period from 28 days to 42 days, so everyone has a fair opportunity to comment. In that time period, we can have that additional briefing then consider all the public comments that come back in that six-week public consultation, and then we can consider uh, all the uh, information from the additional briefing and the public consultation. Um, we might not get it perfect on the first time, and that's why we're going out to public consultation, because I'm sure there's many uh, people out there that are concerned. But the more we delay this, the longer it's going to take to implement, um, our last uh, or our current sustainable environment strategy went out for public consultation back in December 2011 and uh, it was adopted in March um, 
2012. So uh, nine years down the track, I think we need to put it out for public consultation, extend the time period. When we get the public consultation back, plus the additional briefing, we can then sit down and uh, adopt the sustainable um, strategy review. Thank, thank you. you, Councillor Lucas. Councillor Catalano speaking against um, the motion. I think the, uh, yes, thank you. I think the, um, the kind of toing and froing in the chamber right now is, um, it's basically uh, an illustration of just how difficult this process of sustainability is going to be for this council in the future. And, you know, it's not going to be a question of, oh, we'll just rush this document off and we'll just get some community consultation and, hey, it is all going to be all right. You know, this is a massive, massive, and you all know it, it's a massive undertaking. And do you know what? We're in trouble. And I think we all know that as well. I mean, I'm not going to go into what we're facing, but... We actually give ourselves a little bit of time to actually at least talk about these targets because tonight we've got a discussion about whether targets are achievable or not, whether we should be aspiring, whether we can actually achieve the targets. Now, let's get some sort of uh, solidity about that because targets, is they have to be met. This is the whole point of it, guys. These targets will have to be met down the track. It's not like, oh, we'll just pretend it'll be OK, we'll have a target, we'll pretend to reach it, and it'll, we won't reach it, but it'll be OK, because guess what? It's not going to be OK. And I think we all know that. The science is out there. So what we do now is we take a little bit more time to get a bit more information. For instance, I'd like to know how Sydney achieved its zero um, target, uh, targets, and I'd like to do some research on that myself before this strategic um, document goes out. So let's just take a step back. Let's get some more information. Let's have a bit more discussion. Let's put out a document that actually is going to reach... So that, so that we can actually reach and achieve the targets and that we can actually become a sustainable uh, uh, city in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Any further speakers? Councillor Coley, you wish to close. Thank you, Mayor. I, I couldn't have said better myself, Councillor um, Catalano, so thank you for that. Um, Councillors, the City of Swan makes up a huge proportion, a huge area of the metropolitan um, Perth, and with that comes a responsibility for waterways, uh, parks, trees, bird life, uh, uh, flora and fauna of all sorts. Um, we have a, a, a greater responsibility, I think, than most councils to really consider this. Um, as Councillor Lucas pointed out, there's nine years ago with this document it was looked at. Nine years ago, and um, I really think this is a chance to hone this document down before we put it out. It's nine years ago, it hasn't come um, before me and on my time at council and, and probably for many other councillors as well. So it really is just a, about honing this down before we put it out and understanding it better so that we, when we uh, engage with the community we will have a better understanding of what the document actually uh, wants to achieve. So it's really about that. This is just for uh, two months. We get a briefing and then we can then understand a lot better and make some changes if necessary, if we think that has to be done. So please please uh, support this deferral. Thank you. The vote those in favour? Of Councillor Richardson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Kiley, Councillor Zanino, Councillor Johnson, Radovnik and Scanlon. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Am I correct? OK. The motion fails. Councillor Lucas, you foreshadowed the staff recommendation. Uh, yes, I um, move that council resolve to one adopt the draft sustainable environment strategy be released to the public for an advertising period of 42 days. Okay. Second, that Councillor McCulloch. Is there anyone against? We should debate it. No. Thank no. Okay, so put the vote. Those in favour. Is everyone in favour with the exception of Councillor Catalano and Councillor Kiley? Sorry, Councillor. It's carried.
Council, we now go to uh, 4.1, which is the consideration of submissions for the proposed amendment number 166 to local planning scheme number 17 to insert the additional use of industry general on lot 15152 2J Road in Gijiganup, and have a motion from Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move that Council resolves to one, note the submissions received from the public and agencies. Two, concur with submissions received and not su support proposed amendment 166 to local planning scheme 17 for the following reasons. One, the proposals, proposed introduction of an industrial use to the land is inconsistent with the intent of the resource zone to provide for extractive industries and ultimate rehabilitation of land back to its prior natural state. In this instance, an extensive bushland landscape. Two, a waste recycle facility has the potential to adversely impact the water quality of Susanna Brook downstream from the subject land. Three, forward the amended amendment documentation and schedule of submissions to the West Australian Planning Commission with the request that the Minister for Planning refuse to grant approval for the reasons set out above. Four, advise all those who made submissions of Council's decision accordingly. Second it. Councillor Zanino. Is anyone against? There is. We should debate it. Councillor Lucas. No. no. In that case, I'll put a vote. Those in favour? Is everybody in favour with the exception of Councillor Lucas? Motion is carried. Now move to item 4.2, which is um, amendment number 193, local planning scheme to update the noise, our aircraft noise special control area. Councillor um, Kylie is leaving the room. And a motion from Councillor Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. My motion is very similar to the officer's recommendation, but I'll read it out so we understand it. Um, the council, well, Councillor, can you, there's only one paragraph in this that's this, moved. This, if you'd like to read that one, thanks. There's two, but I'm concerned that uh, it will not be understood if I don't read all of it. So I'm going to adopt Seriously? Amendment 193 to Local Planning Scheme Number 17 as a basic amendment pursuant to Regulation 35 of the Planning and Development Local Planning Schemes Regulation 2015 to modify the scheme maps so the aircraft noise exposure special control area for Perth Airport is consistent with the endorsed 2020 Perth Airport Australian noise exposure forecast contour mapping for land affected by the 20 and above ANEF noise contour. Two, advise the Western Australian Planning Commission and the Minister for Planning that the Council considers the proposed amendment to be a basic amendment as it is to make local planning scheme number 17 consistent with the state planning policy 5.1 land use planning in the vicinity of Perth Airport July 2015 and the most recent aircraft noise exposure forecast for Perth Airport endorsed by Air Services Australia. Three, forward amendment number 193 to local planning scheme number 17 to the West Australian Planning Commission for final determination. And councillors, the rest of it is new. Four, following the final determination by the WAPC, the city shall write to those property owners whose properties have been removed from the noise exposure forecast area and advise that they may apply to Langate to have any aircraft noise notice removed from their land title. And five, to record the reason for changing the officer's recommendation is that land titles should not include outdated aircraft noise notices. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Scanlon. Is anyone against? Okay, carried. Councillors, that takes us to item... Uh, call recall, Councillor Colley. Thank you, Mr. CEO. She left the building. Okay, Councillor, we go to item 4.9, which is the part demolition and alterations and additions to an existing single dwelling, a house at number, a lot 20, number 1, Hill Street, Guildford. Before we proceed, I think, Mr CEO, there is another declaration to be made. Thank you, Mr Mayor. We have a further declaration of interest for item 4.9 from Councillor Richardson, and it's an interest of impartiality as she is a member of the Guildford Association. Thank you, Mr CEO. And I have a motion for Councillor Johnson. Mr Mayor, I prefer that Councillor Scanlon's motion on the next page goes before mine. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Scanlon did... Mention that to me, Councillor Scanlon. 
Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Johnson, for allowing me to go first. I think it's quite important for this, so thank you. So um, my motion to defer reads that Council resolve to defer this item until the March Council meeting to allow councillors time to meet with the architect to consider and discuss changes in line with the Guildford Conservation Policy. Okay, so you're amending the motion. You've got it here from February to March. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Kiley, is there anyone against? No one against, get it carried. I now go to item 4.10 is the fencing at lot 145, number 102, Lakeview Drive, Gijiganup, and Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I move that Council resolve to, one, approve the application for a fence at lot 145, number 102, Lakeview Drive, Gijiganup, subject to the following condition. One, the approval is for the fence as illustrated on the approved plans. Two, record the reason for the change is that the fence is of a type that is um, suitable for the area, uh, consistent with other uses of such fences. Okay, the seconder, Councillor Zanino. Is there anyone against? It's carried. Councillor's item 4.11 is a report on the 2019 annual electors meeting, a motion to petition for number 12, Astroloma Place, Kingamaya, and Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, my motion is that Council resolve to request that the CEO hold three consultation meetings with members of the Congamar community to, one, gather Congamar community views on what should be done with the reserve funds from the sale of number 12 Astroloma Place, two, to present feasible options to the community for using the reserve funds to the benefit of Congamar, including an option to repurchase some of the land, three, present the community favoured option or options to the Kungamai community for final comment before bringing the proposal to Council. And two, to record the reason for changing the officer's recommendation is that the residents, electors and ratepayers of Kungamai never considered that 12 Astroloma place was surplus to public open space requirements in Kungamai. Second up in Councillor Scanlon. Is anyone against? No against. Okay, carried. Item 5.3 is proposed removal of the bas uh, basketball hoop in Noonan Park, Cavisham, and Councillor Lucas. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I move to put aside the officer's recommendation and move the following. One, the basketball hard stand remain and not be removed. Two, a new backboard be installed at the opposite end of the hard stand and the hard stand be repainted accordingly. Three, record the reasons for changing the officer's recommendation as one, residents and children will still be able to play basketball. Two, the backboard will be further away from affected residents. Three, more residents were in favour of keeping the half court basketball court. Four, this option is much cheaper than the complete removal of the half court uh, hard stand and five, notify the submitters accordingly. Do I have a seconder? Seconder, Councillor McNamara. Is anyone against? Do you wish to debate it? Yes, thank you. Okay. Councillor Lucas. Uh, thank you, councillors. Um, since last Thursday evening, I've visited this, this park 20 times. The first being last Thursday evening at about 5pm, uh, and I observed three teenage boys playing basketball one teenage boy on a BMX bike and one on a skateboard. Last evening, uh, I attended about 5 p.m. There were four teenage boys, three of which were on bicycles, one on a skateboard, and there were four girls standing in the shade on the grass area by the soccer goals. What I did notice was that none of the boys last night were actually playing basketball, but they're all using the hard squat hard court stand to do tricks on their BMX bike and their skateboard. So this is another activity that the half court provides to local youth and its removal would not only affect just the basketball players but also people using it for that purpose. Um, on the 17 other occasions I attended, other than those two I've mentioned, one this morning there was one lady walking two dogs 
and there's a city of Swan um, outdoor worker doing some gardening. On the other 17 occasions, there's actually no one present at the park playing any type of sport. Um, you've heard deputations in a public statement tonight that the park gets used 24-7. You've had emails to that effect. I've been there from 7.30 in the morning to mid-morning, about 10.30 to mid-afternoon, and as late as 6.30 uh, on some nights. And there, on those 17 occasions, there's absolutely no use of the park whatsoever. So why do I want the uh, basketball court to remain? And why do I want the uh, backboard moved to the other end? Well, I think it's going to go a long way to reduce the noise. I took my laser rangefinder there this morning. I stood at the backboard and it's 25 metres to the front of the closest house, directly in line with the backboard. Two houses further along, it's 34 metres. And at the very end house to the um, Castella uh, drive end, it's 43 metres. metres. The length of the basketball court, the half court, is 14 metres. So that would mean then from the closest house, the basketball backboard would be 39 metres. From the house second up, which is at 34 metres, it would go to 48 metres. And from the end house at 43 metres, it would go to 57 metres being away. I think the extra 14 metres uh, away from those houses will dramatically reduce the noise of the um, backboard issue. And I heard last week that the backboard's actually in need of replacement, and that's part of the reason for the back... When the balls hit the backboard, if it's not tight, if the ring's loose, it makes additional noise. So a new backboard at the opposite end will alleviate some of those noise issues. Is it going to relieve, relieve every noise issue? No, it won't. Last week, the three teenage boys who were playing basketball had a small speaker uh, playing some music. When I sat in my car in line with the first house at 25 metres, I couldn't actually hear the music until I got out and approached the boys and spoke to them, and then I could hear the music. It was not loud. It was just loud enough for them to hear it. In fact, as I sat in my car and watched them play basketball, if I wound the windows up in my car, I couldn't hear the balls bouncing off the court, off the backboard, or hear the music. Um, it was only when I wound my windows down. But I did observe on the way home, and I want to be fair and honest, that we had an easterly that day. We had an easterly most of last week, which was actually blowing the noise away from the closest houses which uh, to the west. So I heard tonight that Mr De Costa went around his neighbourhood and he obtained 64 um, signatures on a petition to support keeping the basketball, half-ball basketball court in place. And he said three people didn't want to get involved and didn't sign it. They didn't object to it, they just didn't want to sign and support keeping it. Um, if you remember from the uh, presentation last week, Mr Coton stated that staff changed their minds several times before they put the recommendation in the agenda to remove it. Yeah, 30 seconds left, Councillor. Oh, I better go a, a little bit quicker and I may ask for some more time. Swan Active Beach Borough, previously known as Eltone Park, currently has 87 teams of basketballers playing, which includes 609 children. They play on Saturdays. There's a further 50 children that participate uh, in schools and coaching on Saturday. And on Tuesday, there's a non-structured social basketball events which attract another 30 to 40 adults every Tuesday. Councillor Lucas, that's the time. Have you got I'll request to go? one more minute. Thank you, Mr Another Mayor. minute, Mayor. Okay. I'm happy to extend that for one more minute. Thank you. Um, earlier today, I would have sent you an email. I went to the sales office for Taylor Private Estate, where this basketball court um, is, and I also left a hard copy of Noonan Park, which was then called Springvale Park. On the lots that were for sale in 2014, the basketball court is clearly um, shown as a future um, infrastructure item, as was the gazebo, hard stand gazebo, um, in that residential area. People buying in 2015 could have not have avoided, when they went into the previous prefab sales office, 
I took a photo of it today at the new sales office, but it's the old billboard advertising Taylor Private Estate. It had the basketball court shown on Springvale Park, because that's what they thought they would call it at the time, and the 10 lots highlighted on the hard copy I gave you out tonight were the 10 lots being talked about on the hard copy of being sold, and titles were expected in mid-October 2014. Thank you, Councillor so, Lucas. So anyone going into the sales office in 2015 should have seen Thank there you. was a Thank basketball you. court Thank going you, in. Councillor Thank Lucas. you, Mr. Councillor McNamara is the seconder. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've got some information with regard to the actual uh, petitioners uh, against and for this situation, the original ones, rather than the 64 tonight. Um, there was uh, 17. Ten were supposedly objecting and seven were supporting. Out of those ten, we had one... I'm not going to give the addresses, Mr Mayor, because it wouldn't be fair. One was 450 metres away from the uh, affected uh, situation, and one was 670 metres away. The other ones had two from one household, and the other and, and one other then had two from house, from one household. So, so basically, there was one, two, three, four, four objectors who were actually could hear if there was. A noise situation. There were four objectors from 64 plus the rest of the ones that's here tonight from, from, from this. It is clearly obvious that these people who purchased these, the, 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 these uh, residents at this situation in this particular area were aware that there was going to be a, a basketball court and a gazebo and other uh, play areas in, the, in this situation. It's very clear, councillors, from this. And look, we went through this situation uh, in in, uh, in, uh, in various other places where basketballs uh, have been closed down because of the noise, genuine reasons. But in this case, the majority of the people do not mind, and they actually recommend that the kids have something to do. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Speaker against the motion. Councillor, question. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd just like to ask you a question following on from the agenda forum last week. Mr Coton, um, I believe, said that the noise regulations or some, something has changed since this was built and currently it would not be built that close to houses. I'd just like to ask him what that... or you, Mr. Through you, the distance. Thank you, Councillor. Mr Coton? That was um, councils adopted the city's standards of provision for parks and public open spaces, so that was in relation to the number of basketball courts in that general area. Thank you, Mr Caton. So could I clarify with you, Mr Mayor, yeah, further question? that it is not the distance from the houses, it's the number of basketball courts in a certain area? Yep. Yes. Is that Thank correct? you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. OK. Speaker against the motion. Councillor Kiley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councillors... Um, I don't know what you've been doing in the last few weeks, but I've been answering um, complaints about the thought of putting in a basketball court in Henleybrook and um, responding to the, even the thought of doing that at the moment. Because, uh, And I believe on Monday night there were 70 uh, attendees at a public meeting basically saying we do not want this basketball court or skateboard area yeah. next to our... Uh, it's a point of order. Yeah, I don't see the point, Councillor Scholar. We're talking about a Noonan Park. It's got nothing to do with Henleybrook. Well, it does have a lot to do with it because we're not the only council having to deal with basketball courts oh, well, at the no, moment. Well, I ruled your comment out of order. You'll stick to this because Henleybrook's got nothing to do with Noonan Park. We're talking well, the about question an was, existing what has it got to do with facility. it? So I'll answer the question, if you don't mind, Mayor. What it's got to do with it is that the communities do not want basketball courts being built close to their properties. And staff even support that. And we're not the only council dealing with it, this at the moment. There's a news item that I picked up on in December last year. Oh, Carlisle. Point, of, point of order, please, Mr Mayor, if I may. Oh, oh, this is getting no. ridiculous, Mayor. No, no. Sorry. Councillor Kiley, you, there's a point of order. Just ask you to take your seat while I hear Councillor Congress point of order. The, the, the comment in reference to even the city staff don't want it 
in the Sandown Park context is the... And say that, Councillor Congerton. Councillor Coley, can we hear the point of order, please, Councillor Congerton? It was said in context of Sandown Park and the officer's recommendation we all approved um, back in the 18th of November was unanimous. And you are correct, Councillor Congerton, so you need to rescind that, con that comment, Councillor Coley? I don't believe I made it, Mayor, at all. You don't, I don't, I'm not going to rescind something I don't believe I made, so uh, no, no, no. A, a, apologies, apologies if I did, but I wasn't referring okay, thank to... thank you, I'll take that, so you can continue with yeah, the debate. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Councillors, we're not the only council having to deal with the removal of basketball courts. There was an item in the news from Channel 7 that I've recorded here. If anybody would like to see it after the meeting, it was the removal of some basketball courts in Carlisle. Um, it was driving... The caption below the news item was, this is the basketball driving... Uh, the community mad. I think it is something to that extent. Um, I'm suggesting that we don't uh, make a decision on this at the moment because this decision will affect one section of the community but it will satisfy some other uh, people in the community. This, As we got from the public consultation, it's fairly 50-50 down the line in terms of those wanting it to remain and those wanting it to, to, uh, to be removed. So at the moment, I'm suggesting that we defer the item until next month, just for one month, until we get clarity around the terms of use of the nearby school's basketball courts, with which Councillor Lucas and myself and Councillor Catalano have been pushing for for some, uh, some years now. Um, as I understand it, we built the Oval for Cavisham Valley Primary School. We, uh, that, that's been settled in terms of the cost, I understand. However, we built that on the understanding that we would get shared use of the, the, the new school's facilities. Cavisham Valley Primary School was completed last year. It's open, it's a great school, and they've got great basketball courts. Unfortunately, they've got very high fences locking them up at the moment. We need to ascertain the terms of the use so that we don't uh, detrimentally affect a group of kids in the area who want to play basketball if we decide to remove it. We don't, I'm not saying we're going to remove it at the moment, but I'm just saying let's get clarity around the terms of use of the local primary school's basketball courts, which is only like a five-minute walk around the corner. And I have here before me a Department of Education document about community use of school facilities and resources, and it says in the opening policy statement, school facilities and resources must be made available for use by the community, TAFE, WA colleges and any other potential users. So in discussions also, beyond the Department of Education document, in discussions with the principal, the principal at the Cavisham Valley Primary School has no problem with us making use of that basketball court. He said that on two occasions to me. However, what I'm saying is let's not make a decision. This is... Councillor Lucas is shutting the door on considering other options. Um, it's premature to make a decision now. Let's hold off until next month. Cl staff can inform us about whether we can actually have access to the uh, basketball courts. Um, Councillor Lucas's comments about noise, not, not hearing any noise. Well, no one's complaining about BMX and, and skateboard use at the park. No one's complaining about girls standing around in the shade. Um, no one's complaining about soccer. This is complaining about basketball courts. And you don't have to. Uh, I mean, it's like going to a friend's place who has under a flight path. You turn up there five or six times, there's no planes, this is nice and quiet. But on the seventh or eighth time you turn up, suddenly a big jet goes over the top. So you don't have to be listening to the noise all the time for it to drive the computer. Got a minute left, Councillor To drive the people nuts who actually live there. The officers in this case have equivocated over whether they should recommend removing or um, letting it stay. Um, again, goes to the point, let's find a solution which is going to benefit everybody in the community. If we can get use of the basketball courts around the corner, then the children are not going to be affected, and therefore Councillor Lucas's concerns and uh, uh, Mr DeCosta's concerns about having somewhere for the kids to play can be, uh, you know, we've got somewhere for the kids to play in that case. So, but let's not make a decision until next month when we can find out from staff what the situation is. So please support... Uh, my deferral motion, uh, or I encourage you to uh, refuse Councillor Lucas's motion because it basically shuts Thank the you, door. Thank you, Councillor Colley. That's your time. Speaker, for the motion. Question, Mr Mayor. Question, Councillor Johnson. Um, if we move the...
basketball court backboard by 14 metres further away from the sensitive receptor being the, the four homes where the, uh, that are affected. Um, by how much is that going to reduce the um, decibels in the, uh, in the houses? I wonder if um, Mr Coton okay, can answer. Can you answer that? I can't, but I'll pass on to Mr Bishop, who, with his environmental health background, will give a very concise Thank answer. Thank you. <laughs> Mr Bishop. Amble. Thank you, Mr Coden. Um, basically, from a point source of noise, for every doubling of the distance, you get a six decibel reduction in sound pressure level. Um, I can't remember exactly what the distance is quoted as 25 currently. So if you wanted to see a six, roughly a six decibel reduction, which is a, a noticeable difference, you're talking about a doubling in distance. So if it's 25 now, you would be looking at 50 metres. If you extend the distance, you will get a reduction in, in, in decibels, definitely, but to get in the order of six decibels, you're talking doubling the distance. But of course then if you've at 25 and you go to 50, to get another six decibel reduction, you've got to go from 50 to 100. Thank you, Mr Bishop. Just a follow-on question. Have we actually measured the, uh, the sound using a decibel meter in the affected bedrooms? Mr. No, Bishop, we haven't. Mr. Cater, Mr Bishop, thank you. Okay. Would the direction that the backboard is facing make a difference? So I'm presuming that the sound is, um, bounces off the backboard and heads perpendicular to the, the plane of the... Uh, basketball backboard. Mr Bishop. Uh, yeah, that's correct, Mr Mayor. Um, objects in which the path of the sound travels and uh, noise will reflect off those objects. So whilst that, that rule, that six, doubling the distance and six decibel is if you've got clear space, if you've got obstacles where the sound can bounce off, then it can change the, the outcome. Certainly if you've got a solid ob object, it will obviously reflect back off that object. So Thank if you, we... Bishop. So I've got another question. So if we were to rotate this by 90 degrees so that the sound is not being projected into the, um, uh, the four houses, but instead is being projected at uh, Mr Costa's house, would that um, go somewhere to solving the problem? Mr Bishop? Uh, yes, if you, uh, whatever angle the uh, backboard is facing, it will have an impact on, on wh how the sound waves travel. Uh, ultimately, unless you measure that, you, you can't say exactly what that pattern will be, but clearly it will have an impact on the, on the way waves remove, you know, travel out from that point source. Thank you. You finished your questions, Councillor Johnson? I was just wondering if uh, Councillor Lucas would care to rotate the... Uh, the board by 90 degrees as well? Uh, no, Mr Mayor, because the court uh, is set up as a half basketball court and the width and the length are different um, in dimensions. Councillor McNamara. It's true, you, Mr Mayor, to uh, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Johnson, are you aware that there are four objectors close, reasonably close to this, to this uh, uh, basketball court? There are two north at Noonan Road and two south at Costella. So if you actually do what uh, the question is, are you aware that if you do what you're proposing to do, you're actually interfering, you're bringing closer the, the noise issue to the southern Costella people? That's what you're doing. So I'm unsure whether you, 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 you've actually gone into okay, Well, I think that the probably is when you go detail. into the debate. Councillor Catalina, you got a question? Yes, I've got a question of um, Councillor McNamara, actually. The councillor, those um, uh, objections, that list of objections and uh, those that supported, um, in fact, the people that were objecting... Good question, because we're sort of yeah, debating... Yeah, I was just going to ask, um, are you aware that um, the objectors actually objected to the, council, to the uh, basketball ring being removed and not retained? I think you're getting a bit confused. I am far from confused, Councillor Catalano. I am totally aware that there are out of six homes who are directly facing this particular basketball court, five of them support it. Okay. End of story. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a question, Mr Mayor. I'll hear your question, Councillor. 
Uh, my question falls on from Council Lucas's comment. Um, would he care to look at uh, Google Maps, Noonan Park, and advise if the basketball court is a square or a rectangle? It looks like a square to me. Mr. Caton, can you confirm whether it's a square or a rectangle? It does appear to be a square from the aerial photo, but I don't have exact measurements to hand. Thank you. So if it is a square, and I'm seeing a square here, um, would Council look at to rotate it by 90 degrees so that it faces um, I think the you know, basketball player's uh, property, then he would receive the impact Council himself? Does, I think you, you, what you want to do is you want to propose an amendment to Council Lucas's motion. That's the procedure if you wish to do that. OK, in that case, um, I'd like to propose an amendment to, uh, to rotate it by 90 degrees so that the... Um, Backboard is facing Costello Drive. Councillor Lucas is the mover. Uh, no, I don't accept that as an amendment. Seconder? Okay. In that case, I'm going to need a, a second to your amendment. Question, Mayor. Question, Councillor Anderson. Thank you. Uh, with the proposed new backboard, um, have we any indication of uh, what level of sound reduction we'll get with the newer, better quality board? Mr Caton? Um, not exactly. Staff did consider that. They don't think that the, um, you know, that there would be a great reduction. But as was um, one thing to point out in the notes for the agenda forum, a uh, number of weeks ago, staff did find that there was a loose screw in the backboard which was rectified. So that would have been contributing to some of the noise prior to that. But we don't have a, a figure of how much a, a, a different backboard would reduce the sound by. So I did ask for a second and I didn't get it, so that fails. So we're now back to can I have a speaker for Councillor Lucas's motion. Speaker against, Councillor Catalano. Yes, thank you. Um, the difference with Noonan Park and, in fact, all of the other, uh, the other three parks uh, where, where the basket, other three basketball courts are located in Caversham and more than likely pretty much everywhere else as well. The thing about Noonan Park is that it's actually a very small park and also it's uh, geographic or, or its topography, I should say, is such that there's a swale over in the southwestern corner which is a lot lower than the rest of the park. And the park is completely surrounded by houses. So what happens is that there's noise in that park and it is amplified. It is, in fact, an amphitheatre. It is not a suitable place for a basketball court. And the city didn't build it, unfortunately, but they've inherited it. And as we've heard tonight, and as we've heard for the last couple of weeks, and as I've heard for some time, this is a real problem and it's a real conflict and it's causing conflict in the community and division. And the, re the fact is that we have to stop it. We have to stop the conflict because there are people there who live around that park who have the right to quiet enjoyment of their properties. Now, it's irrespective of what, who knew when or whatever went on. The fact is, the noise of the basketball playing, which cannot be controlled by city, it cannot be controlled by any of the property owners around the area, that noise exceeds the limits, disturbs the quiet enjoyment of residents and is incompatible with the quiet enjoyment of those residents in that area. Now, unlike the aircraft noise, we can do something about it. And that's what we're here for tonight. We're going to have to make a decision to remove the basketball ring at least. The idea of putting the basketball backboard down the other end of the court isn't feasible because right adjacent to where that 
basketball, the, the basketball hoop is proposed to be located is a seating area. So you can imagine how many people are going to be seated in this pergola that are going to get basketballs lobbed at them. We're talking about a basketball court. Now, it is really time, and I'm sure that we'll be able to get the staff to uh, successfully negotiate with uh, the school because basketball courts belong in recreation centres. When I was a child in the southwest, it was, um, we're talking about the, the country town. The basketball courts were not located right next, butting up 20 metres to someone's front um, uh, bedroom where shift workers and pe young parents are trying to get their babies to sleep. No, they were located out down the recreation centre because there'd be no conflict when it comes to noise. Look, it's not even good for the children who use the space, and I think we've heard about this as well, for them to have to yeah, remaining, be exposed to the, the, the conflict that is ensuing from this basketball ring. I mean, OK, you can leave the court, but the ring has to go because it is encouraging basketball playing. And... It, it is uncontrollable, so we're going to have to just make a decision to remove the ring, leave the um, people who live in that area to their quiet enjoyment, open, get the courts opened up uh, over at the rec centre. We end up with four basketball courts in, the, in Caversham. That's more than enough. And we've got a solution that serves everybody's purpose. That's what we're here for, councillors. We're here to make decisions that actually comes up with a solution. Thank you, councillor. That's your five minutes. Speaker for the motion. Speaker against. Councillor Johnson. Yeah, Mr Mayor, just a procedural motion first. Um, I'd like to move that uh, my um, speech be given uh, behind closed doors because I want to refer to the personal uh, affairs of, uh, of an individual. So I'd like to move that way and I'd like someone to second that. Thank you. Well, if we're talking about the motion, there's nothing confidential in the motion. I'd like to second that. Thank to you. Yeah, I'd like to second I'm that. talking to Councillor Johnson. I'd appreciate if you don't interrupt me. Thank you. Um, so if we need to... I don't understand if we're going to speak about a basketball backward where there would be a confidential interest here. I'm going to talk uh, about the impact on someone who is who, for reasons she wouldn't want me to dis that person would not want me to disclose, does not want to give a deputation. So I'd like that to be behind closed doors. It's about the I think one of the reasons uh, council can go behind closed doors if uh, we're going to discuss the, the personal situation of an individual, which is what I intend to do. I'm opposed to that, Mayor. OK, well, I think you moved the motion that we go behind closed doors because you want to bring up some, some personal issues. There was a seconder, I think, Councillor Catalano. And Councillor Colley, you've indicated you're against it. Is there any other councillors against going behind the closed doors? Councillor Congress, you're going to have to tell us why, Councillor, because we're going to have to debate it. Because of apprehension. Uh, the, the person would be in great apprehension, Mr Mayor, if I discuss this. And I think once you hear uh, it, you, you would probably see what the impact is. So I'd like this to be to be put to the vote. I can, uh, I think it's the best thing. Right, well, we've got to Second. I'd like to hear what Councillor Johnson's got to say. And if he's going to say that behind closed doors, then I'd like to hear it behind That's closed Kylie. doors. Thank you. Mr Speak against going behind the closed doors. I do, Mayor. Uh, I don't think we would need to. I think we're um, getting beyond the uh, the issue that's really got to be considered here, and uh, I think we should just get on with it. Thank you. Any other speakers on that one? Okay, could I have a motion, a vote. We go behind closed doors if need be. Those in favour? One, two, three, four, five. Motion's lost, Councillor. You're going to have to debate around it. I will. Okay. It may appear to be finely balanced, councillors but it's not. 
The staff themselves say uh, the city considers that due to the proximity of the basketball court to the nearby homes that the noise likely exceeds the environmental protection noise regulations 1997. So in other words, council, councillors, inside their homes, it is too noisy. It is noisier uh, than it is in a home in Guildford to which uh, aircraft are flying over. Councillors, the noise of a basketball hitting that backboard at any time of the day or night, which could happen at any time, uh, if you were uh, living in such close proximity, only 25 metres away, I assure you, you would be affected. The bedrooms of these four houses, which are particularly badly uh, affected, are um, only 25 metres away. Councillors, it's public knowledge if you visit um, Boxall um, Road, uh, Street Road, I think it is, that um, the first thing that surprised me was the proliferation of um, video cameras and uh, video doorbells everywhere. And then at one house I, I went to, I discovered that uh, not only were there numerous video cameras, but there was an enormous um, steel door to keep people out. And this person, Mr Mayor, is apprehending significant fear in addition to having uh, this person's sleep disrupted. And this person was afraid to give a public deputation because they are being intimidated. So that is what they are apprehending. They are apprehending intimidation. Now, councillors, if, if you want some uh, insight into this, take another read of that email that was sent describing in enormous detail what I did on Sunday as a councillor going to understand a problem, just as Councillor Lucas did. I went along and uh, just had a look around. And I knocked on some doors and, uh, and I met with, uh, with one person and spent some time talking. And that's, uh, uh, I found it quite emotional. I found it quite draining. And I came away absolutely convinced that this basketball hoop has to go immediately. We cannot continue with this. So I felt I was doing my duty there as a councillor. Now, councillors, I want to draw your attention, firstly, to, to that email and the enormous detail uh, the record of my movements, exactly what I did, where I went, what I said, how long I spent in somebody's house, which house I went in, why I was there, is extraordinary level of detail. And then, councillors, if, um, if you turn to page 341 on your agenda, page 342, it says, I have CCTV footage of my driveway, and it has the park and court in the background. I've reviewed this footage quickly in the last 30 days last night. So... The primary use of the CCTV is for the protection of my property. This is not the person I visited. This is somebody else who is keeping a detailed record. People are afraid to come and go because they know they're being watched. Councillors, it, this is actually the most, for me personally, it's been the most distressing thing I've, uh, I've had to do since I've been a, been a councillor. I find it hard to talk about it, and I also find it really quite inappropriate uh, the line of questioning that was um, brought about previously through simply going about my business and attempting to protect my community to try to understand what they were doing. So let's make it clear, the one thing I will say, this was a single woman living on her own who is apprehending fear. It's a serious matter, councillor. It's not something you should make fun of. It should be, you should be absolutely ashamed of it. So... Yeah, councillor, just suggest some decorum, please, and just continue the debate. Yes. I'm trying to emphasise it's a serious matter and not to be taken lightly. So, councillors, I've suggested a few solutions tonight, but I knew nobody would be interested. Councillors, it boils down to this. If we take the basketball hoop away, the kids can still play basketball. There's lots of basketball hoops nearby where nobody's complaining, and there's a school basketball uh, court nearby, which I understand that uh, we have... Um, uh, partly contributed to. It's locked up. I went and looked. There's a lock on it. It's a beautiful basketball court with two basketball courts. Everybody could go and play there. You're it's one minute, councillor. Two or three minutes walk away. So I think that's the solution. But if we leave it there, people still can't sleep. It may only be a small number of people. But why should a small number of people have their lives so seriously impacted? Uh, they can't get to sleep. They're living in fear. And... Um, that's why, Mr Mayor, I think it is a clear and obvious thing that we should remove this basketball hoop immediately. The kids can still play basketball, uh, but uh, the problem will gradually subside and people won't need CCTV cameras and um, steel doors. And I think everything will uh, gradually, over a few months, go back to normal. So, councillors, 
I wasn't able to tell you the full story, but I've told you as much as I think I should. And um, please, Thank you, Councillor. Councillor that's, that's your five minutes. Take it seriously. Okay. Further speaker for the motion? No other speakers. Councillor Lucas. I'll address Councillor Johnson's uh, point last about removing the basketball court. It's only a couple of minutes walk. One of the objectors says... Uh, even if it's an extra 800 metres, it means crossing a busy road and not being close enough to home to feel safe. Um, you just have to read the objections. I love seeing and hearing kids uh, playing at the park. I want to know what is antisocial about this. You heard a uh, public statement tonight from one person said she enjoys the kids being across there. It makes her happy to watch kids play. I've lived opposite the park for over four years and have never had a problem with people using the basketball ring. This is all in your agenda, councillors. I object to the removal of the basketball ring in Newnham Park. It's long been respectfully used by children in the immediate area. It's been wonderful to watch our youth. Uh, a particular one I want to root out is that I'd be very disappointed if this were to happen because I regularly use the basketball court for fitness and so does my husband. I live directly opposite the basketball court and the noise is not a problem. My 11-month-old... Point, point of order, Mayor. You, 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 can, you don't need to play basketball to do fitness. Well, that's irrelevant. These yeah, people do it. I'm Council, just reading I'm out sorry, you don't have a the people who Council objected. Council Luke is referencing a comment. He's got an 11-month-old daughter whose bedroom is at the front of our house and uh, we've got no complaints about the noise. Yes, there has been noise, but it's not all day long or all night long. Um, I don't know where all this hatred has come about by kids going out and playing some sport. That's what they should be doing rather than being sitting in a, a home somewhere on an iPad or computer playing games. It's great uh, seeing kids out there exercising. Um, a couple of people have mentioned, and I think the overwhelming thing for me is uh, the 64 local residents who supported it on a petition as opposed to the uh, eight people who put in an objection to uh, have it removed. I think mine is a fair, balanced uh, motion by putting it further away, and I'm not cutting out uh, the school uh, alternative, Councillor Kiley. I'm not shutting the gate on that, but at least I'm, I can go back and reassess it in six or 12 months' time, uh, if need be, and come up with another solution. But I think just to take it out, because we've had a few complaints... We might as well just shut every park down because kids go out there and play, they yell, they play music. Uh, car parks are just as bad. They park in, their, park in the cars and do things, but let the kids enjoy the park. Uh, people bought there knowing it was going to be a half basketball court there, and I'll um, trust that the uh, majority of councillors will support my motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lucas. Can put a vote? Those in favour of Councillor Lucas's motion? Carried those against were Councillor Richardson, Councillor Catalano, Councillor Kiley, Councillor Johnson and Councillor Scanlon. Most is carried. Councillors, that takes care of all of Part B. Um, there are no motions which previous notices have been given. Notice of motions for consideration the following meeting have given during this meeting. Councillors, Councillor Congleton. Thank you, and you'll submit that paperwork. Go, Councillor Catalano. Uh, yes, I'd like to um, give notice of a motion to cancel the calendar, City of Swan calendar. Um, that'll be in the next... I'll, I'll prepare that for the next month's meeting. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Councillor Scanlon. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to submit a notice of motion that Council resolve to develop a street beautification program along Greatest and Highway in Midland from Morrison Road to Lloyd Street or an appropriate section within that area, including street trees, public art, and encouraging public, uh, property owners to restore heritage facades. Okay, thank you. Any others? Councillor Kiley. Uh, revocation of uh, Councillor Lucas's motion. Councillor Lucas's motion just passed in relation to the basketball courts. I move that the revocation motion be put, Mr Mayor. I'll just, I'll move. Just to refer to Ms Albright, if you can just clarify that if I get a revocation motion at a meeting, I have to deal with it at the meeting. 
OK, so Councillor Colley will need a show of five hands to... Yes, that. that's correct, Mr Mayor. So, Councillor Colley, you need five hands. Councillors, a show of hands for Councillor Colley's revocation motion. Sorry, Councillor, you need enough, it fails. You got three. Yeah, one, two, three. Your hand went up, down, up, down, so I didn't count you. No, no, no Councillor Kylie's. So at the moment I've got three, so it's fell. Any further? Thank you, Councillors. That now takes us to uh, the confidential items. I need a motion to go behind closed doors. Move Councillor Parry. Seconded Councillor Jones. Turn everything off.